welcome to what is one of the most, my most favorite Sundays of the year. Do you know why? Fall back. Fall back. There's no excuse. You set your, your clocks back, and a spring ahead is one of my least favorites. So I am so glad to see all of you. I'm so excited to be in the house today to, uh, to just rejoice. God is doing great things in the life of our church, our people, and, and just so grateful. Last Sunday, right after church, we set up for our second um, annual but always annual uh, opportunity for a Halloween outreach, our masquerade, and we just had it going on. It was so uh, such a, a beautiful experience. We had over 300 people uh, walk through here and be a part of uh, being blessed from rides to uh, pets, uh, a pet petting zoo, and really little miniature horses walking around. It was just and popcorn and uh, just everything abound. Uh, beautiful people doing a beautiful outreach, just loving people in a beautiful way. And everyone who came was, they were just moved by um, uh, our people and the spirit. So I just want to say thank you if you came. Thank you if you gave out candy. Uh, thank you if you invited somebody. It was a great, great day. So uh, I think I'm reeling, still reeling from that. Well, a lot of announcements, great announcements. Today we're kind of back to our schedule. So musical practice right after church, and we'll have uh, lunch for our actors and actresses. And then right after that, BG Kids are happening at 2.30 to 4. And so uh, they'll be uh, meeting together. And then Anchor is on at 4 o'clock. So that's today's schedule, and it is the time of the year where Operation Christmas Child takes place. So next Sunday, our AIM group is going out, and they're going shopping for uh, filling up a shoebox for a third world child to send Christmas to, and Anchor is going shopping too. So just want to invite you to give your kids snack shack money and uh, money to buy some great things, wow things for our shoe boxes, that's five dollars. Bring that next week, and if you want to do that, if you want to pack a shoe box, uh, I think it's just a wonderful way to really anticipate Christmas and really do Christmas. You share the gospel story. Uh, these children are blessed, and when you've seen a child open a box, a shoe box, and just the excitement and joy. So I just want to encourage you, there, there are these labels with all the instruction on the table in the back. So take one, uh, get your shoebox ready, and drop it off next Sunday because we're going to deliver. Um, so if you're behind, let me know, and, and we can help you with that. But shoot for next Sunday, bringing them here. Did Audrey make it in the house? Eliza was having an ear problem this morning, so I'm not sure. She wanted to come and just encourage us, uh, invite us, challenge us to come and walk or run for Tom Turkey Trot. So there's a flyer on your table, tells you how to register. If you've waited till now, you'll pay more. And so that's good. We're, we're fine with that. Um, I wait till the end all the time. Take this with you and register or just register right now. Um, not during the sermon, though. No, don't do that during the sermon. But uh, register for that. Uh, come if you just want to come and eat pancakes and give $5. And it's just going to be a great day. Praying for great weather always. Uh, even when it's cold, it's great weather. So I uh, just want to encourage you to come and be a part of that undertaking. So there's a new thing we're doing to, uh, to really do some outreach, invitation, uh, bless our families at the gate, bless friends of our family, our preschool arena. We're doing a gingerbread bash. Charlie, would you show This Christmas, instead of building a gingerbread house, let's build a gingerbread nativity. Gingerbread bash is a sweet, hands-on experience that helps your family remember the true reason for the Christmas season. Together, we'll build gingerbread nativities, hear the Christmas story from the Bible, 
sing songs, and discover that sometimes the greatest gift comes in the most ordinary box. So on November 28th at 5 p.m., we're going to have a gingerbread bash. You do have to RSVP. There's a sign-up list there um, in the back of the church, and I'll also send it out electronically. But this is a great time to prepare for the holidays right after Thanksgiving, right at the end of the weekend, and just gather, hear the Christmas story. Nikki's leading the charge. It's going to be a beautiful and festive night of gathering together and uh, just celebrating Jesus and hearing the story, the Christmas story. So please put that on your calendar and join us. No matter what age you are, it's going to be great fun. All you do is bring yourself, though. We'll have everything prepared for you, so come and join us. And also on your table, wow, there's a lot of announcements today. We are just joining God at work in so many places, but uh, Happy Face is our annual Christmas party for those in need in our own community. And we join with Fluvanna Christian Service Society. And this year again, it's going to be in Saints Peter and Paul's, uh, their parking lot. So we won't be inside. We'll be missing a lot of opportunities that we, we used to be able to do. But this year, this year, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus will be there giving out great crafts for families to be reminded of the reason for the season santa is coming and so uh he'll be blessing the kids as they drive through and uh amelie is leading the charge joining with hope uh henry and hudson granola or is it hudson henry Gr granola and they're gonna make about 500 cookies so we can give out cookies just like the old days to all the children their families driving through so if you're interested in that you let Amelie know let me know and I'll find out the date that they're gonna be doing that in the kitchen I'm so excited about that and on your table is an opportunity we used to ask for uh, vouchers and you can still do a donation, a $20 donation, so a child can get a coupon to get a brand new toy. Or you can follow that instruction on that paper and just drop off a brand new toy uh, during this time. December 5th is the Happy Face Party, so you've got to get on quick um, and do that if you want to join in there. And we also have our food pantry that you can donate some food because we make food baskets for the families in our community as well. Okay, last announcement. We have adorable photo booth, festive fall booth right outside the door. So I want to invite you when you leave today to take a photo, take a shot, and, uh, and just get that in your, uh, your photo album and just enjoy how you beautiful you look this morning. So I think that's about it. Let's welcome one another. Let's prepare to worship God. And I'm uh, just so glad you're here. God bless you today. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Stand and let's worship. Well, good morning, Beautiful Gate. It is an honor to join you virtually this morning for worship. Uh, I just want to invite you all now to wrap up your conversations and make your way back to your seats as we enter into our time of worship this morning. Who am I that the highest would welcome I was lost, but he brought me oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh his free indeed 
I'm a child of God, yes I am. Yes, he died for me Through the sun sets for me Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Through the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Salvation sounds a new beginning As distant hearts begin believing Redemption's bit is unrelenting Your love goes on your love goes on You carry us, you carry us When the world is away You cover us, you cover us With your endless grace Your love is relentless love is relentless Your love is relentless Your love is relentless Time is up for chasing shadows You gave the world the light to follow Hope that shines beyond tomorrow Your love goes on Your love goes on You carry us, you carry us When the world gives away You cover us, you cover us Your love is relentless. Your love.
love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Tearing through the veil of darkness, breaking every chain you set us free. Fighting for the furthest heart you gave your life for all to see. Tearing through the veil of darkness, breaking every chain you set us free. Fighting for the furthest heart you gave your life. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless.
Let's pray together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for waking us up, for bringing us here to this place and this time. God, we pray that whatever's going on in our lives in this place and this season, God, that we know that we can just lay those down at the feet of the cross this morning. We can give those to Jesus. And God, I pray that you would prepare our hearts and our minds for what June has to share with us this morning. God, I pray that you would speak through her, speak to us this morning, um, and allow us to have an encounter with you um, as we go forth this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, when when God is at work, it's, it's so visible. My whole sermon, like I just gave him um, the title to the series that uh, we're going to begin this morning, and just like the old days, uh, he just had every every message, every line in that song is just where we're going this morning. It's so encouraging just to be so connected uh, when you have the Holy Spirit and he knits us together. Mason will be joining us live uh, next week, so I'm excited about that. And so just excited to worship the Lord, though. It's so good uh, to just lift up our praise and our thanksgivings and and whatever it is that we're struggling with this morning. Well, I want to give you some updates, and just uh, at the end of our our outreach, our Halloween event last Sunday, I got a message from Reverend Emil Sampeel, and we'd been praying for him. And as I shared with you, he was under much duress, and a smear campaign was waged against him, and he was suspended from his role as principal director of uh, Lot Carey Mission School. And on Saturday evening, uh, Sunday evening, they reinstated him, and he began work that next Monday. And so it was an absolute answer to prayer for for weeks, really. And he he went through so much suffering. So I don't know if you've heard that song. He's never late. He's never early. He never uh, he he was really close to late. Like it was really like our time. It was like Sunday night, yeah, really late. I just laughed. It's like because I was a little discouraged. Um, we had been praying mightily. So not that it's over for Emil because he suffered much, but we just praise God. Mary Lou got home from rehab this week, and so she is enjoying being home in her house and, and feeling so good. So we, we just want to um, celebrate with her and hope to see her next week. We want to continue to pray for uh, housing for Jackie and Lee Cox as their mortgage uh, rewrite went to the underwriter. So we just pray that they would receive favor. And Shelly Farley uh, had kidney stones this week. Like, I mean, I just don't know how much more the woman can bear, but uh, she she's just in a lot of pain, went to the ER, and they diagnosed that. So, um, and... I got a message uh, last evening that Harold Wright uh, went home to glory yesterday. So um, we've been praying for him. If you know Angel, uh, Angel Studio, that's her husband. He is a faithful, devoted um, child of God, as we sing, and the son has set him free. He, he passed comfortably, which was our prayer and his family was gathered around his bedside, and and so we we just praise God for that. Uh, Audrey's in the house. Do you want to come on up? <laughs> Better she's never early. She's always late, but she's not God, and that's okay. So she wants to just uh, uh, give a word, encouragement, a challenge. What? You never. Uh, she does. She's obedient. <laughs> I'm obedient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Is this on? Do you want me, can I just talk right there? No, near it. That's good. Is this on? Hello? Yes, yeah. You can hold it. You can take it out. I brought, I brought these things. I brought little. You want to hold these and share? Okay. Give me this. All right. This is the medal for this year. I went with a different company, so we would have a different little thing. And then... 
There's five waves. We're talking about the turkey trot, by the way. I didn't hear if we said that. Um, November 20th, so five waves, and the first place winner in each of the five waves will get a trophy. But everybody gets a medal. So if you have And haven't pancakes. And pancakes, most importantly. <laughs> so if you haven't, <laughs> Charlie's excited. If you, <laughs> if you haven't signed up yet, the... They what? have it right here yeah, on their... Do it. You have this. So sign up, please. You can come that day and sign up. Some people do that every year, Bottos. But they <laughs> signed up. <laughs> they did. I should not. Because I put this on the <laughs> table. <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> they already did. It's very exciting. So um, we're going to do five waves, 8, 8.30, 9, 9.30, 10. Um, I'll start emailing people probably next week to find out what time you want to come. But it's very laid back and casual, not as rigid as last year was as far as the wave times. So you'll just go run the 5K course, and then you come back here or and walk eat pancakes, it. or walk it, or crawl it, <laughs> or cheat and not do it at all, John Hamill. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> we are not that strict here. <laughs> you did do a little bit of it. We are not strict. I'm not following you. I'll have directionals out there. The whole dogs do it often. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Oh, they do. So I don't know if they're doing it. Connor Jeffries is running an 1820 currently. So if anybody thinks they can beat that, by <laughs> all means, I'll let you know what time he's running. <laughs> and he needs some humble ling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. It's. I mean, we have, I, I meant to look. I'm sorry. I am late to everything. But I'm here. But you're here. It's <laughs> so good. Thank you. All right. Would you just give her some encouragement? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. And I missed a birthday. Tracy is having a birthday. Having a birthday? Wants to have a birthday? Is Tracy, you're the only one? I won't, yeah. Uh, I won't ask you. Uh, you're the same age as Nikki, right? Are you ahead? You're be, you're you're now as old as Nikki. She not now. Not <laughs> happy birthday to you, Tracy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tracy. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, John. Throw her in the good bay. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all, and it's good to be at the gate this morning. Um, it's hard to believe that it's already November, and we are speeding towards the holiday season. And for me, that's happening too fast. One idea that's been going around uh, the during the holiday season in recent years is to pick your word for the upcoming year. Now, I haven't done it before, but I have seen it and heard about it a lot. I think we tried to do it one year at the gate. Did we try to do that one time? Um, um, but I couldn't focus on one word, so I made up my own word by mashing a few words together, but that didn't really stick because I couldn't remember what the word was. <laughs> so it just slipped away. It was crazy. Um, it was like five words put together. But anyways, uh, this year I think I'm ahead of the curve because I think I found my word for 2022. Oh, yeah. This word has been popping up uh, in my everyday life over the past few weeks, here at church, on the radio, on my social media, and the word is steadfast. Of course, I looked it up uh, to make sure I wasn't making some kind of big mistake. Um, when referring to a person, steadfast means firm in purpose, resolution, faith, or attachment. So when I plug that into different roles in my life, it works. I want to be a steadfast husband. I want to be a steadfast father. I want to be a steadfast employee. Um, and I want to be a steadfast member of this church. And most importantly, I want to be a steadfast Jesus follower. I want to be able to forgive and give grace, to provide peace and comfort, to be faithful at all times, to deal hope in this world, and to share the love that God has given to me with my people and the people that just passed through my life. And as I thought about it, I realized that if I can pull off being a steadfast Jesus follower, well then, the rest will overflow in into my life. Of course, finding the word is the easy part, at, at least for this year it was. So now I need to live it out in the years to come. Let's pray and bless the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful fall day, this church, and all the blessings you provide. Father, as we move into the holiday season, please help us focus on gratitude, on hope, and on love. 
This world will try to make this season about material things and things that will fade and disappear over time. But we ask that you lead us in being steadfast in our, steadfast in our faith and help us celebrate the blessings in our lives and your son Jesus. Father, thank you for today's offering. We ask that you bless it and multiply it so that we can use it to show our community what this holiday season is all about. Thank you, Father. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thursday is Veterans Day, and I know we have some veterans in the house, and I just want to share this video um, this morning to honor and thank them. One time I was waiting for the bus with my son. I remember it was so hot outside and we hadn't had a nap. It seemed like the bus was never going to come. And then this old man walked up. The hat he was wearing stood out to me. I remember that. My son was not giving in, but it didn't seem to bother the man. He looked over at me and said, Looks like you got a real precious one there. I thanked him and looked down the street, hoping to see the bus coming. Honestly, I was probably just embarrassed by the way my son was acting, but before I knew it, he was off on his way. I couldn't help it. I felt compelled to say it. So I just called after him. Sir? Sir? And he turned around. I said, I just wanted to say thank you for your service. And I'll never forget this moment. He smiled real wide at me like he'd known me my whole life. Gently tipped his hat and said, you're very welcome. You were worth it. in the military, and you're a veteran. I'm not going to turn me up. Would you please stand so when we can say thank you to you. I don't know that we could say it enough, but we honor you, we thank you, and we pray God's continued blessing to be upon you. Happy <laughs> Veterans Day. Thank you for serving and thinking that we were worth.
Well, today begins the first message in our new series called Chosen. Now, I have, I have like lists all over my house and every place I go, and I write down uh, when I get a word or I get an image, and, and Chosen was one of those words I said, oh, that, that's going to be a, a great message series. I'm writing that down. And it was a while back. It was a long while back. And, and it may have been. It may have been because I kept seeing, like, um, ads on Facebook pop, pop, uh, popping up like it was months and months ago when that TV series came out, Chosen. Do you remember? Did anybody watch any episodes of that, that series at all? No? Nobody tuned into that? But, um, well, one of my teachers here at the gate, she gave me the DVD and that it had all the episodes, and, and she just said, oh, I just got to tell you, it is awesome. Well, I took it, and I put it in my Bible devotional. Don't, you know, get rid of these things, because someday I'll lose it, uh, use it box, and, and uh, it's near my teaching and study center. And then I made an o- order for... Uh, Bible study and some books I was reading from CBD, from Christian Books Distributor. And so I got my package about a couple weeks ago, and in the box were everything I ordered, but there was the interactive Bible study from Chosen, called Chosen. And either it was a mistake or it was free, and because I never ordered it. So I looked over it, and I, I just said, well, That's how God works with me sometimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God plants things, and and then he shows me things or even gives me things that that I had no part in orchestrating. And I love, I love when God does that. I love even more when I don't miss it, when I don't miss that this is the hand of God uh, carrying me, revealing himself to me, showing me. I remember way back on my journey, way, way back, you know, a really long time ago, God was revealing something to me. He he given me a thought in my mind, and it was about becoming a deacon in my church. And I remember God put it on my heart, and then he sent other people. I got the message three times, three times. And I remember telling people, God spoke to me three times. Three times he spoke to me. I knew it was God. And, and then... It wasn't much later that I realized, oh my gosh, he had to speak to me three times. Three. I thought it was such a supernatural event, but, but it was the thick as a brick. I didn't hear him the first time. And so what I realized on the rest of the journey is I don't want God to have to speak to me three times. I want to I hear God, his movement, and I want to obey. I want to respond the first time out. Well, I want to talk about chosen for the next several weeks because I want to get it into our spiritual vocabulary. I I do this a lot. I talk to us a lot. And, like, I want some words, some uh, truths to just be in our spiritual vocabulary, and this is one of them. I, I want us to understand that you and I are chosen and what being chosen means. And I want us to see that chosen is part of our identity in Christ. Yep, you and I are chosen. We're a lot of things, but we are chosen, chosen by God. We just finished a message series in October that was called No Fear October. We talked about a lot of things. We want to be able to fear not in our lives, right? And it seemed to me that once sin entered the world, People always had a lot of fears to battle. What we're afraid of may change over time, but fear seems to just be the, be- the general backdrop of our lives. Israel, God's people, seem to find themselves over and over again fearful of situations happening to them or around them. And, and they, they just continued. They continued to... Uh, sin and disobey God. They were unfaithful. But despite their sin and disobedience, God used the prophet Isaiah and many of his prophets to talk to his people and tell them they have nothing to fear. 
Isaiah 43, 1. But thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Trust in that. Believe that. You are mine. I have created you. I have called you. You are mine. What a powerful declaration. What a powerful truth for people to be able to hold on to in this world. God is for me. He's not against me. I am his. I am a child of God who the Son sets free, is free indeed. We get to know God and be known by God that God tells us he has redeemed us. Redeem means to purchase back, to ransom back, to deliver from chains, to rescue and restore. To know that, to believe that, trust that, helps us to combat fear in our world and everything around us. Truth be told, we are really simple creatures that were made we were made to be in relationship with God. God made us, and he made us for him. We were made by God for God. And we're designed, we're designed to commune with God, to know and be known by our creator, to interact with, with him, alongside him in our world, and, and be under his care. Without him, we are at the mercy of the world and all the fear that it brings. Without God, there's a significant and unfillable void in our souls because alone, we are not, we're not enough. You're not enough, you're not enough, I'm not enough. The message title today is called Flawed and Called. The prophet Isaiah had an encounter with the Lord that turned his world upside down. If you want to follow on the screen with me or turn in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6, we're going to go from verses 1 through 10. Isaiah 6, 1 through 10. Now Isaiah is a prophet of the Lord, and the title of this section is A Vision of God in the Temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered his faces. With two they covered their feet. And with two they flew. And one called to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that he'd taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to the people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their eyes and shut their eyes so they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Hmm. Isaiah had a vision of God in the temple. And what, when Isaiah saw the Lord in all his glory and all his holiness, Isaiah fell down flat. You just do that. You see holiness. You, you experience the, the profound presence of the Lord. And you just submit. You fall down. 
And in that moment, he came to grips with how flawed, how unclean, how sinful he and his people were, how unworthy he was to be in the presence of the Lord. But as unholy and sinful, unworthy as Isaiah was, God issued him an invitation, a call to go. And Isaiah, he answered the calling. He, he said yes. Right after he said yes, only to discover that he was going to bring this message to a sinful nation that, that would just not listen, that his message would fall on deaf ears. But Isaiah was obedient to the call. Nonetheless, that was placed on his life, that was given to him by the Lord. God would persist speaking love over his chosen people and declaring that they are his own. Isaiah was called to send a message to Israel while they were still sinning toward God, rebelling against God, rejecting God. In other words, God's message was delivered by an unworthy Isaiah to an unworthy people of God's own choosing. The notion of being called into relationship with God can bring with it some hang-ups. And some of those things that deter us from answering that call are things like pride and insecurity. On one hand, prideful people tend to see themselves as worthy, worthy of God's love and approval, they're worthy because they're good. They're good people. By their own measurement system, they see themselves as good and deserving of a spiritual status. But having an overinflated view of ourselves can keep us from repenting and humbling ourselves and responding to God with our whole hearts. On the other hand, insecure people struggle to believe God's love is big enough to to wipe out their personal history of wrongdoing, causing them to feel hopelessly unworthy of his offer to redeem and restore them. Having an underinflated view of ourselves can keep us from accepting and responding to God's call with our whole hearts as well. The problem is if we struggle with worthy or unworthy, worthy, unworthy, the focus is still on ourselves and not on God. God's love is relentless. We sang that this morning. And God never, ever gives up on his people. Even though Israel messed up time after time, God keeps inviting his people to return. God's desire to redeem his people, not just Israel, uh, he gets serious now in the New Testament. God stopped sending prophets for 100, 400 years. He was silent. There were no prophets. And he finally, instead, sent his son. Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel and now all of mankind, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, the whole world. None of us is worthy to be called by him, to accept his invitation, to be chosen, and to be rescued. But that's exactly what he does if we will just trust him. Jesus tells a parable to the crowds that are following him. And he says, this king has a son. He's about to be married. And the invited guests were told, it's time to come. The king sent out his servants to go gather the invited guests. But when the servants went, there was excuse after excuse from the invited guests, and they weren't able to make it to the banquet, to the celebration. And, and flawed as we are, uh, then the king sends his servants. The king wasn't, he wasn't happy about that. So he goes, Go to the streets. Go to everyone, everywhere. Doesn't matter where they live, who they are, and invite them to the banquet. Invite them to take a seat at the table. Those who rejected the invitation were lost, but those just 
ask everyone to come. They enter in. They're welcome. We're all called, all of us, as flawed as we are, Jesus issues us an invitation. We're called into something more than a life lived, serving only ourselves. Jesus invites us to live a life together with him, serving God and experiencing the fulfillment that brings life to us. Jesus calls us to be his disciples, to follow in his footsteps, and ultimately spend eternity with him. This is a calling (coughs) that God puts on our hearts in different ways. Some of us may have heard the gospel and made a decision to just accept it and follow Jesus. Others of us have grown up in the life of the church and experienced a life with God from early on. Maybe some of us have had some dramatic awakenings. And some of us have found God in just pain and loss and suffering. Whatever pathway, we are all flawed, but we're all called. As Jesus' time of suffering was drawing near, it was on Thursday night, right before he went to the garden where he was betrayed by Judas. He gathered with his, his disciples in an upper room, and they were going to celebrate the Passover. And he gave them a new identity. Take a look at with me at John 15, verse 12 through 17. John 15, 12 through 17. Around the table they were gathered, and Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go so that the Father will give you whatever, I'm sorry, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. When disciples followed a rabbi back in Jesus' day, the disciples decided which rabbi they would pick which one they were going to follow. But Jesus tells his disciples that they did not choose Jesus. He chose them. And now the disciples are no longer servants. They are friends, chosen of God. Jesus has chosen and appointed his disciples with a purpose, and that purpose is to bear fruit. Bear fruit. Jesus assures them of his unity with them, And with God. And Jesus tells them that their prayers to bear this fruit, their prayers to fulfill their mission, will be answered. Not just any random prayer. That's where I think we get a little confused. My my prayers weren't answered, but prayers that we would bear fruit, that we would fulfill his mission, will be answered. To be chosen is to accept the invitation, the call, and follow it up to give up everything. To be chosen does not only mean to be favored, but it requires responsible actions. If we've come to Jesus, know that he's redeemed us. We've received this supernatural rush of God invading into our life. It's called the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. We're now linked with God and his redemptive power to bear fruit to fulfill his mission. We're called to live a life of purpose. We're chosen to bear fruit. God answers us when we pray because we're fulfilling the mission entrusted to us. 
We are teachers. We are servants. We are witnesses. We're storytellers. We parent. We lead. We guide. We encourage. We care for others. We pray for others. We give to others. That the kingdom of God would be advanced. That heaven would come to earth. That God's will, God's heart would be done, accomplished in us. Today know, today believe, today understand you are chosen to bear fruit, fruit that will last. People that you will touch that will have eternal destinations. Have you stepped into God's purpose for your life? Are you bearing fruit, praying for God's will to be done and it to be your will? It's time for us to believe the power entrusted to us to live this life uniquely for sure and purposely by and with our Creator. It's November. It's November, and the stores and Amazon tell us Christmas might not come this year. Things are going fast. The packaging, the mailing, uh, the shipping is slow. You might not get what you ordered. Listen, we are chosen, and we are called to bear fruit, especially in seasons like this. We make sure the message of Christmas comes no matter what the retailers say. The message of Christmas, the gratitude of Thanksgiving, are the stories we love to tell. It's our purpose to invite everyone to come to the table, to join in the celebration. We respond to being chosen to share the love of Jesus in our homes, with our friends, our neighbors. We care about the hungry and the homeless. We make sure our food pantry is full. We sign up to serve at Pacham to bring God's loving presence with some good food and some good company on winter nights. We pack a shoebox for a child to discover Jesus loves them and Jesus uses us to prove it. We make sure those with very little in our own community can be blessed at Christmas with toys and food and the reason for Christmas. We live out our calling uniquely and joyfully alongside our God. And to be chosen by God comes with a condition to obey him fully and bear love, bring love. That's the fruit. May we wear our identity chosen and share the love of Christ with everyone, everywhere we possibly can. I dare for us to do that this Christmas and watch Christmas come like never before. Let us pray. God, our our lives in this season, in this world, seem so, so busy. It just seems like there's no time, not enough time to do all the things that we're meant to do, want to do, need to do. So we prioritize. We make choices. God, I pray today that we would choose our calling, that we would remember we're chosen to do what is eternal, to bear fruit that will last. God, I just pray that together, as the family of God, the body of Christ, we would continue 
to love one another as you love, that we would never give up on one another, that we would follow what you tell us, that we would desire your will above our own, that you would use us, that we would desire to work alongside of you, that your kingdom would come from heaven to earth. God, we pray to wear our identity, to bring light, to be hope dealers. And move stones in our lives. Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's the first Sunday of the month, and so we, like the disciples, gather around a table, and we get to share communion the body and the blood of Christ. So I pass on to you what's been handed down in the, in the tradition that on the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he met with his disciples in an upper room. And he took bread and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup is my blood poured out for you. So let us receive the great good gift he gives to us, salvation in Jesus' name.
just worshiping I just (laughs) I don't know about you but it's really not bread when we take this bread other traditions believe that the Holy Spirit actually um It's called transubstantiation, or uh, it's a sacrament. And our Catholic brothers believe that it's actually the the body, that supernaturally, as we take, we eat the body of Christ broken for you, for me. So I never want to take that lightly. Let's rejoice and take the body of Christ broken for us. Let us take, drink the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the one who sets us free. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. The people of God said, Amen. Amen this morning. God bless you this morning. Would you turn to someone at the table? Tell them you're chosen. You're chosen. And then tell them that comes with some condition. To follow Christ. To be obedient. To bear fruit. Let us do that with great joy. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. You chose.